Hello and welcome everyone. It is Monday, February 19th, 2018. I uh, hope everybody's week has been going well. I just wanted to talk about a couple books that I uh, picked up just this past Wednesday that I didn't have a chance to really uh, talk about. Uh, as most of you know, I just pick up my books on Wednesdays and, and do my videos. So I've had a chance to review a couple books. It's going to be Detective Comics 974 and Spider-Man Annual number 42. I'm going to show images for both of those and talk about them. So if you haven't had a chance to read them and you don't want to know what's going on, don't uh, watch this. Turn it off. Uh, otherwise, I'm going to get going here. Before I get going on those, uh, I got Amazing Spider-Man 238 on the left. That is the introduction and first appearance of the Hobgoblin, Mr. Roderick Kingsley. And on the right, you've got Amazing Spider-Man 289, which was the uh, death of Ned Leeds, who was the third Hobgoblin. Or he's labeled as the third Hobgoblin. And he was brainwashed by the original uh, Hobgoblin, Mr. Roderick Kingsley, to go around doing crimes uh, dressed up as the Hobgoblin um, uh, in hopes of being the fall guy, which would then take all the blame off of Mr. Kingsley. Uh, so Jason Massendale, who became the fourth Hobgoblin, hired the foreigner, uh, an assassin, to kill Mr. Leeds. And then Mr. Massendale became the Hobgoblin until he was killed by the original Hobgoblin, Mr. Roderick Kingsley. So yeah, around and around the comic world goes. Anyways, you'll see why that's important in a minute. Um, so first I'm going to start off with 974. Uh, two covers for that one. Now, in 973... Um, Batwoman shoots Clayface in the head and kills him. And so, if you haven't read that, now you know. <laughs> and at uh, so this issue deals a lot with a team arguing and fighting about her decision to kill him. And during the fight, the Batwoman logo gets ripped off of uh, her uniform. And right at the end, um, Jacob Kane. Uh, talks to her and says are you now or are you ready for the real mission to begin and he has a new uniform with a new logo so it seems to me that they're going to be taking Batwoman in a slightly different direction a little darker maybe um, so if you haven't got that issue you might want to pick up a copy I don't think it's going to be a super key down the road or anything but it is uh, kind of the start of her uh, wearing a new uniform and probably going in a new direction so I just wanted to point that out Next, I'm going to start, uh, I'm going to talk about Spider-Man Annual 42. So you've got your variant cover and your regular cover. Now, normally annuals, you know, for the most part, in the past, annuals used to be, a lot of times, were reprints of old stories. They might throw a little, couple of short little stories in there and then new cover, that kind of thing. But uh, lately, some of the annuals, I've been paying attention because they seem to be putting a little more uh, DC and Marvel, putting a little more into their uh, into their annuals like the Batman um, annual number two that came out a little while ago that was really really good and uh, so I picked up a few copies of this I like the uh, variant copy better than the than the regular one but I just want to point out the title on this before we get going is bury the leads so the term bury the lead is an old uh, newspaper um, uh, low is lingo from newsrooms and what they would do is uh, the lead story, the lead of the story, is the important part of a story. Now, um, bearing the lead is a is a technique where so you begin a story with details. I've got this written down here. So you begin a story with details of secondary importance to the reader while postponing more essential points of fact. So basically, bury the leads means you're hiding, you're burying the important parts of the story deep inside. So with a title like that, I read through this, and there's two stories in here, and neither one of them are earth shatteringly good I give the book like a 4 out of 5 or 4 to 10, 5 out of 10 kind of thing I mean they're okay, the artwork's good but you know, over if you just look at it strictly as the stories they aren't that good but then when I went back and read it looking for stuff <clears throat> that Dan Slott may have hidden in there because that's kind of what the title's indicating and as you know he's been writing um, Spider-Man since issue 546 so Brand New Day was the first issue he wrote uh, issue 545, which was the last issue before he took over, was the issue where um, Peter Parker and Mary Jane made a deal with Mephisto 
to save Aunt May, and exchange for that their uh, their love for each other and their their history together was erased from existence. So that was the deal, and Mephisto deal dealt with it. Before the deal was struck, though, Mary Jane whispered something into Mephisto's ear, which we don't know what that means. For ten years, we have no idea. Now, Dan Slott has been saying for a while that this upcoming story arc is ten years in the making. And before, you know, several months ago, before a lot of the... <clears throat> You know, before we knew that uh, Osborne would get in the Carnage symbiote and all that, um, I read a couple articles by people who, you know, read into it and thought that maybe Mephisto was um, bought back into the fold and he had something to do with uh, Osborne and the whole wedding with um, Mary Jane and Peter Parker was back on the table because this summer, as you know, in June, there's that whole big surprise wedding that's coming down the road. So it made a lot of sense. I was reading that, and I kind of liked the idea of Mephisto, Mephisto being brought back in, finding out what Mary Jane whispered, all that kind of stuff. So, um, yeah, anyways, and then, and then, of course, 794 and 95 came out, and 96 coming out this week. It looks like it's uh, Carnage Symbiote, but... You know what, I, there's the off chance that that's to throw you off and maybe something happens because Anti-Venom is going to be in 796 as well. So there's a couple things I want to point out in this book and we'll see if it pans out or whatever. But the whole point of this is I think you, I recommend picking up, if you don't have a copy of this, I recommend picking up a copy. I don't think it'll be a super key or anything down the road. But there's a few things that happen in here that, uh, as a collector, you, you're going to probably want to have this book in your collection. If you're only going to buy one, I'd recommend you buy the uh, the variant, if you can get it. I kind of like that cover. It seems to be worth a little bit more. People are asking a bit more for it. Although the, uh, the original one's not too bad either. So, Anyways, let's get going in this. The uh, So, in the Clone Conspiracy that came out in 2016 and 17, the Enforcers were brought back. And they have all their memories and everything, and they're they're in this in this uh, issue, and play a pretty mean role in the issue as well. As Ned Leeds was brought back in that story, but Peter Parker saw him basically disintegrate. So we go through the whole story, and at the end of the story, Ned Leeds is brought back. There's Ned Leeds right there. He helps save the day from a bomb that's going to go off in the park and whatnot. I'm not going to go into the whole story. I just want to point out the important facts. So you've got Ned Leeds, who's been dead in Spider-Man 289 since June of 87. That's 31 years he's been gone. And now all of a sudden he's back into the Marvel Universe. Now I've seen a few people online point this out, and then that's basically all they do. They don't go any further. So now you've got Ned Leeds back into the fold. Next story is... All about Peter Parker's spider senses and everything else. He's going along through the story. Now the whole story revolves around everybody's trying to plan a surprise party for him. So they're kind of distracting him with different things, getting him to do different things. But on the first page you see Peter Parker's walking by all these Daily Bugle headlines on the wall. And you've got Dr. Octopus joins Hydra and Green Goblin escapes. New Sinister Six. And then he's covering up a title you can't really see. Talks about Galactus. And his office sends him down to Stark Labs to try and where he meets up with MJ. Now they walk by all these doors 45, 46, 545 being the first uh, or the last issue before Dan Slott took over again with Mephisto in it. And right on door 45 it says Demon in a Bottle. So there's a reference to Mephisto in 545. And then you got 4546 would have been the first issue Dan Slott took over. And MJ and Peter are walking along. And they go down to this to the lab. Where the lab, this is something that's kind of odd that they threw this in there. The lab has got, it says, our lab has just discovered the most dangerous chemical in the world. It's like an unstoppable pandemic virus made up of tiny nuclear bombs. And the lab tech says, now we're going to expose it to gamma rays to see what happens. So you've got all that going on there, and then um, that's pretty much it for the story, except Peter Parker walks by all the 
the headlines again and now the one that was covered up before is blank except for the word menace and you're like what the hell what is Jim what has that got to do with anything well in issue 545 that was the first introduction of a character called Lily Hollister who became the character menace after she got green goblin serum spilled on her so I don't know what that means if it means anything I don't know if it's just the way of Dan Slott kind of wrapping up uh, playing homage to all his stories over the years, some of the stuff he liked, but I find it odd that we've got this new dangerous chemical that's being exposed to gamma rays introduced. You've got a mention of, to me, of Mephisto, and you've got a mention of the character Menace, who was uh, introduced a while back, so um, just kind of cool. Like say Dan Slott said this thing's 10 years in the making. I don't know if any of that's any of that's going to pan out. I don't know. Maybe maybe the secret that uh, MJ whispered into Mephisto's ear is going to be revealed. Who knows? But uh, the whole point of that is I think there's a little bit, little bit more going on in here that will be revealed down the road. Some of that hopefully. And being a collector, this is an issue you're probably going to want to get in your collection. Or at least I would recommend you getting it. I'm not saying go out, go out and buy 10 copies or anything, but you know, pick up, if you don't have it, pick up a copy. Um, try to get the, there's like say there's two covers, so if you can get the, uh, the variant, get it. If not, just grab the regular cover. But uh, that's it. Just wanted to let you know about that. I like to get let everybody know what kind of the stuff I, I see in the books and what I, if I think it's worth collecting. So that's definitely one I've got. I will see you on Wednesday. Some really, really good books coming out this week. So stay tuned. Talk to you later. Bye.